Hello Perfect Beauties, my name is Daisy and today I'm going to be doing a video in response to Hey It's Faye's video, the Asian American tag. That video really resonated with me and I just love how honest and real she was and I feel like my ethnicity, my culture has been a huge struggle with me. You guys know that I started Banish and I started my YouTube channel because I had always felt like an outsider. I felt like I never belonged. I grew up in Minnesota and, you know, being the only Asian there, I just, I felt so alienated and I felt like the odd one out. And I think that has completely shaped who I feel today and still gives me like insecurity about that, which is why with Banish, we want to make sure that everyone feels empowered and feel like they can be themselves and don't feel like they have to fit in to be portrayed in a certain way. I'm going to do the Asian American tag. I am Chinese American. I took the 23andMe test and it's interesting because I am 15% Mongolian, 1% European, 0.1% other, and the rest Chinese, which I thought was cool because I'm from like northeastern part of China so it all kind of makes sense from there and I feel like my facial features the fact that I have like broad shoulders the fact that my nose is a little bit like larger for an Asian like I felt like everything made sense after I took the 23andMe which is like super cool I am first generation immigrant I think in my preschool, I went to preschool in Des Moines, Iowa, and I could barely speak English. I was about four years old, and I remember one of the students asking me if I was a boy or a girl, because I had a very androgynous clothing on and a bowl cut, and all my clothes were like, you know, from hand-me-downs and stuff. And so I just remember like wanting to defend myself, telling them, because I could understand what they were asking me, but I wanted to say that I was a girl, and that is who I am. and. The fact that I wasn't confident enough in my English to say that and to defend myself, I felt so powerless. Like for someone to come and ask you what gender you are and not being able to express that makes you feel so powerless. And I can completely understand how maybe people of, you know, trans or people of, you know, different genders feel. But that was the first time I, I knew I was different. And then I remember another time when I was 11 years old, I was invited to a sleepover and at the sleepover, I didn't have many friends again. Um, I always felt like different from everybody and I was so excited to be invited to the sleepover because I was like, okay, maybe I'm like included in something. Maybe I get to be part of something. And when we were doing makeovers, I remember one of the girls trying to put mascara on us and she was telling me like I had no eyelashes. She was like, where do I put it? You have no eyelashes and like telling everybody else and they kind of kind of snickered on me and I have felt kind of insecure about my eyes and my eyelashes ever since then and like a year ago, I went to get eyelash extensions. While she's looking at my eyes, she's like, wow, you really don't have any eyelashes or they're really fine eyelashes and I'm like, like, why would I be here paying you $200 to put on eyelash extensions on my eyes if I had amazing eyelashes? Like, I guess I got so defensive and hurt by that comment because it kind of brought me back to that point in my life where everybody was telling me how different my facial features were and I was just like, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to feel like I'm any more different than anybody else. And thank God for fake eyelashes now because I have really big eyelashes right now. I also felt discrimination in terms that my mom also worked. So in my neighborhood, we were probably the only family that had two parents working. And like now it's like really good. It signifies, you know, female empowerment, like, you know, working women, um, furthering their careers. But I think back then I saw it and I think other people saw it as oh, we're, we're poor, so we need to have two people work. You know, my parents couldn't be part of like, you know, school activities and functions because they were working. And so I just knew I was different. You know, like my parents couldn't pick me up or drop me off to different play dates, which I think furthered the isolation. Yeah, I just realized being an immigrant 
I was different. I feel like there have been kind of ebbs and flows of my heritage. You know, when I was younger, I really rejected it. I rejected my name. I have a Chinese name and I rejected the teacher calling me that because I would always butcher it and then kids would snicker. I rejected, you know, the fact that I looked different. I rejected the fact that I was different. I rejected the fact that just nothing, like I just felt like I couldn't connect or belong with anyone, even celebrating Christmas and you know, doing all this stuff, like we didn't do that kind of stuff. I didn't want to be who I was because it made me different, it made me isolated. I remember there's this period of time where I was obsessed and I wanted to get um, blonde hair and I wanted to have blue color contacts and all that so I could appear more Caucasian and then I wanted to look half Asian and I thought like maybe if I do this or do that I could look half Asian so I, I'm not as Asian and then I went to college and then I realized like in college when you're 18 19 years old Asian girls were sought of as very like hot commodity it was very trendy I guess because this is when Mark Zuckerberg had you know married his wife like and all these tech guys having Asian wives so it was very trendy to have an Asian girlfriend and Asian girls were seen as exotic and high in demand I guess so I would always like up play my Asian features so I would always wear my hair straight and long and do really smoky cat eyes to make my eyes seem even more Asian-ness. So then I embraced being Asian and then now I would say I actually kind of reject it because I think my personality has changed so much being a business owner that I feel like the personality traits of being Asian works against you in business and Sometimes I blame my Asian culture and my Asian upbringing on why maybe I'm not good at business. And I sometimes use that as a crutch and as an excuse, which I completely recognize. But I feel like if I grew up in a different kind of culture, I think I would be more confident in business sometimes. So I kind of reject it now, which I don't mean to. I just feel like being Asian works against me and succeeding in business. Just a couple of days ago, I was getting into my car from a grocery store and um, this old man like looks over at me and he's like, where are you from? Where are you from? And I didn't respond because I was like, oh my God, another like racist like guy wanting to know where I'm from. Like, why does it matter where I'm from? I'm just getting in my car leaving. And uh, he's like, Japan, Philippines, China, like just like, like demanding an answer. And it was okay if you asked me where I'm from and then just like, I don't say anything and then like go away. But he kept like giving like examples of answers that made me feel like he felt like he was entitled to an answer. And I actually said, like I said, Minnesota, like, you know, because that is where I'm from and where I, I was raised. He was like, huh? And then the, the woman next to him, she's like, Minnesota, like saying like, dumb old guy, like, you know, like, didn't you hear her? Because he was so confused. I feel like it really bothers me because it always seems like it's like always the old white men and from my experience who's always asking me, where are you from? Or what ethnicity are you? Like that's the first question they ask you and it, and to me it's just very insulting because it's like, I don't know, can you ask me about like what, how the day is or how the weather is or I don't know, something else about me or even mention my car, like nice car or something, but don't, mention something that like objectifies me immediately. I just really felt offended by that. So that's kind of a stereotype I hate, but another stereotype, I mean, I struggle with so many stereotypes and I would say my, you know, culture is something I struggle with all the time. But also the other day I was at Starbucks and there is this Asian girl and she's, you know, she's dressed really well. I think she's gonna have a business meeting or something perfect manicured nails, flawless skin, like everything was perfect about her. She had a, a leather leather bound um, portfolio and like a notepad and like a beautiful pen and she was waiting for somebody and she was waiting there for literally an hour because I, I saw her going on her phone and looking outside and just sitting there 
And all of a sudden, like an hour later, this like old, maybe in his 60s, white male comes in. He looks very disheveled, kind of like out of place. So he like plops down on the chair and he's like, you know, legs spread out. He just like starts like talking, blah, 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 blah. And then I noticed that the Asian girl would just kind of like sit up here with like her hand on her um, palm and just go, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and just smile and nod and agree and take notes and I don't know why that interaction really stuck out with me but it kind of reminded me of like my interactions maybe beforehand because I think the stereotype is that the Asian girl is very submissive and docile and is taking notes and is absorbing everything that this older man is saying as fact even though he could probably is like bullshitting the entire time and then I was thinking like, why could it not be the other way around where the Asian girl is sitting there talking like this, making the guy wait an hour for her and then having the white male just like be at her fingertips and like take all the notes. And I don't know, it just, I think it rubbed me the wrong way because very rarely do you see Asian women in positions of power, I guess, white males working for Asian women or like, I don't know, very rarely do you see that kind of dynamic and you know, in politics and in businesses and everything that you see, like it might make some guys uncomfortable working for a younger Asian female, you know, if, if the Asian girl is um, his boss. And I just felt like it kind of irked me and I really don't like the stereotype that Asian women were submissive and docile and we're great upholders of citizenship and we're great people you know and we mind our own business and we're bad drivers because hello i am an amazing driver i have never been in an accident that was my fault i've never had a traffic violation so i am an amazing driver so don't make fun of me i also think people think that asians are not individuals that we kind of flock together like a clan that we like don't have a mind of our own, that we're like sheep rather than like people and we're not very creative and innovative, which I do see culturally why that stereotype exists, but I don't like to be put into that. My mom, she, you know, made me go to Chinese school and like made me learn Chinese and all that stuff and I just hated it. I absolutely thought it was torture. And when we went back to China, I also felt so conflicted because yes, this is my family and this is my home, but it's also the part that I think people made fun of me for being. And so it was hard for me to embrace something that I was so ashamed of, kind of. Again, I wanted to look like everybody else. I wanted to fit in, I wanted to belong. And so going back to somewhere where was the reason I didn't fit, just didn't really like vibe with me. So unfortunately, my language skills are very, very limited in that department. And people are very, very surprised how little Chinese I am. I don't celebrate Chinese New Year. I don't celebrate any of the holidays or really any of the traditions. I just don't really care. I don't really celebrate American traditions either. I'm just kind of doing my own thing. I think when Chinese people meet me, they're kind of surprised. And it's hard because I've never felt like I belonged in either category. I don't think I'm, like, I don't belong in like completely American traditions and values, but I also don't belong in like the Asian <laughs> like traditions and values. I feel like the, the people I, I connect with the most are people who've grown up poor because I think that instills a value of hard work and not being too high maintenance and down to earthness. But other than that, I've never felt like I belonged in a group of people. And that's just, even to this day, I still feel like out of place no matter where I am. This is something that is really hard for me to talk about because my parents, I mean, being a first generation immigrant and my dad came to this country with $600 in his pocket, I feel like it's so hard for anyone to understand how difficult it is to succeed in this world under those circumstances unless you have been through that experience. Just working so hard and saving every single penny 
and investing everything to his kids and you know to his family's kids and all that stuff has put an extreme amount of pressure on me. I do love my parents and I do appreciate them for all the stuff that they've done, but in return, there's so much pressure to be a certain way that your parents want you to be because I guess when they came to this country, they had to sacrifice everything. Like, think about it. My parents had to sacrifice seeing their family, their friends, everything to come to this country and to make it and, you know, sacrifice discrimination and harassment at work to simply succeed and take home money. I remember like living in the apartment, you know, we didn't have a table so we would take an old box and put, you know, magazine covers over a big box to eat dinner on because the table was too expensive unless we saw a table out on the street and the trash and we'd bring it in like that's kind of the condition that I live under and to see them now has given me such appreciation for them but at the same time brings so much inner guilt inside me when I don't follow or do something that they would like. You know, my parents have this vision for creating a better life for their kids and their kids and the future generation. And I'm 30 now and so, you know, I'm not married, I don't have kids and that's really, really concerning for my parents because they think I'm just gonna be this like single old woman in a shoe with cats which is totally fine, I think, in American culture. Like, it's way more accepted to be a single woman, but I think in Asian culture, it's like, like, oh my God, like, what's wrong with her? There must be something wrong with her. I think my parents are really fearing that because they think, well, everything we did is a waste if she doesn't have a family, which I think puts a lot of pressure on me. My parents never wanted me to start a business. In fact, when I first started it, I didn't tell them about it because they wouldn't have been supportive at all because I just even remember my mom kept telling me, she's like, how do you think you can do something and make a profit where you can hire other people? She's like, that it's like so impossible and so hard. And I, I just remember thinking like, I need, I need to do this. I can't just like not do this. This is something people need. And only until like I was successful and had to file tax returns and stuff did they know that I didn't have a job anymore with my old company, but they never wanted me to have this life um, that I do, this very independent life and this very powerful life. Because I think for a woman, a powerful Asian woman, I think is so scary for most people to handle. And I think my parents don't want me to end up alone and lonely because I don't fit in with a lot of stuff. And so, it has been such a struggle for me. It's probably been the hardest thing I've ever had to deal with. Trying to figure out you know, how to stay true to myself, because that's like my mantra, right? Staying true to myself. At the same time, appreciating my parents and respecting them and helping them and giving back. I don't want to feel like I've, I've disappointed or wasted their time and effort if I don't do what they have always dreamed that I would do. My parents and I are still, like, we still love each other, we're still on good terms, but the relationship has been very strained and hard for me. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about my heritage, to be honest. I don't really feel like I belong to a heritage. I don't feel like I belong to a culture. I feel like I don't identify it. I think ever since starting the business, I feel like I have identified less and less with it because I think I see a lot of successful businesses that I want to emulate and a lot of them are not Asian business owners. The reality is it's just there's very, very few of us Asian women who are very successful and powerful and I want to be like the powerful women and I see powerful women being either white or black for whatever reason. Like people who are African American, I think they're more in positions of like power maybe more so than Asian people. I just don't want being Asian to impede me from being successful. So I think I have shied away and not identified with it, which I don't know if it is the right thing or wrong thing. I think sometimes I blame certain things on my Asian culture. For example, the inability to make certain decisions, the inability to be decisive, inability to be individualistic and innovative. 
I feel like sometimes I need to ask opinions of people so many times without trusting what I want and going after it. I think that's a very Asian thing because I think Asians, we follow a path of success and when there is no clear path or clear answer, we freak out, we don't know what to do and I sometimes feel that myself and we just don't trust ourselves. Whereas I feel like in other cultures, like people just do what they want and they're very individualistic and they don't really care what people think and I really wish I could be like that. I think running a business and having worked with a lot of different cultures, I feel like the favorite thing about being Asian American is that I think we have an amazing work ethic. I feel like Asian, like we have this stereotype of being such hard workers and super reliable and diligent and just like hard workers, right? And I do believe that I am a very hard worker and I'm very determined and I love that about my ethnicity. <laughs> Um, and about the way we're portrayed. I also think more so than being Asian American, I think I love being a first generation immigrant because I was able to see from my family um, how to start with zero and get something to a lot. And I think it really inspires me and makes me think that I can really do anything, I can make anything happen because I've seen it before firsthand, which I, think to me is way more powerful than the way my eyes look or the color of my hair. And I am so, so blessed, even with all the issues I have with being Asian, I am so, so blessed that I am an Asian American woman in the United States of America because being a woman in another country would mean I don't even get to go to school or can't even vote, you know, in certain places. So I'm very, very, very lucky about that. That was a long video, but I hope you guys enjoyed that. My true feelings of how I feel about my ethnicity. Thank you so much, Faith, for being vulnerable in your video. Um, and I'll have her video linked below so you can check hers out because Faye is Hmong American, whereas I'm Chinese American. We have very, very different viewpoints of being Asian. And I think it's just so great to to do this tag and to spread awareness about it because everyone thinks like Asian we're clumped together and like and we're all the same but the way I respond to this tag is gonna be very very different from the way Jen Im had responded or Joan Kim or Faye you know has so thank you all so much and this is Daisy and I'll talk to you guys later bye